And now I'll mix the two together. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask Neil That's to order me one from. I'll order one up from, from Radio Spares. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, hello, everybody. We give this lecture really to try and inspire young people to consider science and particularly chemistry. So this was a picture which um, was drawn by a youngster when they were asked to tell us what science was all about. So um, when we're doing the lecture, we would advise those, particularly in the front 12 rows, <laughs> to wear your safety glasses. And now I'll mix the two together. And the moment that they're mixed, you see that we get this emission of luminescent light. And in this case, it's a rather nice fetching blue. see if the, the vessel itself will relight a glowing splint. So there's a glowing splint and it relights. It really is the best experiment that you ever did, isn't it? It's just so satisfying. No nitrogen, no water vapour in the flask. Now we can add phosphorus. Phosphorus is the tiger of the periodic table. It's stored under water. And here we have a small amount, tied onto a piece of string so that I don't have to go ferreting around with a spatula or anything like that to get it out. Now, the energy required to start the combustion of phosphorus in air is actually quite low. And in fact, there's enough energy in your fingertip, as the scars on my fingers will show. So I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to remove it from the water. And here you can see, if I leave it in the atmosphere, it'll start to smoke. But I'm going to put it into the flask before we lose control of it. It's a quite hideous material, but it does really fantastic chemistry. Now, as I said, the activation energy required, I'm just going to put the lights off. The activation energy required is very small. I could use the tip of my finger if it was long enough, but it's not. So I have a copper rod, which I'm just going to heat slightly in this flame, and then across to the flask. And let's see what happens with this one. So I think you can see straight away that that's a really, really quite nice chemical reaction. You're getting lots of that really, really bright white light. It looks fierce though, doesn't it? But it's cold. Because what you're seeing is the phosphorus pentoxide on the side of the flask, which is a phosphorescent compound. So it's getting excited and then it's phosphorescing. There is a small amount of phosphorus pentoxide coming out of the top, which is drying my throat slightly. And the string's actually burning as well. Right. This is a device that we developed in Nottingham. It's called a match on a stick. I think it now has international renown. Are you ready, Neil? OK. So, match on a stick to cotton wool and oxygen. I use water because it acts a bit like suspension in the back of your car, and it means that when the reaction reaches completion, it doesn't blow the bottom off my test tube because it's quite energetic. So here we have the barking dog. Okay. So Now it's time for statistics, yes? Because to get all three to go really is a miracle. So here we have a custom designed test tube, which again, we've got the same mixture, carbon disulfide, N2O, and a little bit of water. Pop it back down into our favorite rocket tube. And again, let's 
see if we can light this one off. So any of you that missed the photograph opportunity for the other two, cross your fingers now. Where are we? <laughs>